Low-cost energy also helped us bring jobs and factories roaring back from China, Mexico, and all of the other foreign countries that have been ripping us off for many years, decades and decades. We created an incredible 1.2 million new manufacturing jobs. Nobody said that was possible. Do you remember Obama? Did anybody ever hear of Obama? What did you say? That's, That's not very respectful, Sid. Barack Hussein Obama. Remember? Remember Rush Limbaugh? He used to go. Remember? He'd go, Barack Hussein Obama. He used to scream out. It was, we, he will be missed, right? He is missed. He is missed. But we created an incredible 1.2 million manufacturing jobs. Everybody said that was impossible. Obama said it was not possible. He thought we gave up on manufacturing, that places like this, Mario, wouldn't exist. You know that. He said that they'll be made in other places. You know, we would have nothing to do. What are we going to do? They want to build just low income. Everyone's going to build low income housing. At some point, or senior citizen, at some point, though, people have to like work and create things, you know, not just places to stay. <laughs> But in my next term to accelerate our manufacturing resurgence and we were setting records, not only were we building and doing it, we were setting records at doing manufacturing jobs because I was tariffing and taxing China and other countries at a level that made it more competitive for companies like this to build here than it was to build over in China to deliver here where we would actually build cars in China, and I put a big tax on those cars coming in and stopped it, but we would build cars in China and sell them in the United States and lose our jobs. And China and other countries, not just China, other countries, they'd say, we're not going to take your cars at all. If you want to make cars and if you want to sell them in India or if you want to sell them in any one of many countries, come over here and build a plant, but you're not going to sell them if you make them in the United States. We let this go on for years. We stopped it. We stopped it. <laughs> and who can blame them if they get away with it? Who can blame them? That's why they became such monsters in terms of manufacturing, because of our politicians who were very stupid or corrupt, but who were very stupid people. They destroyed our country. I mean, they've destroyed the manufacturing base of our country. You look at shipbuilding, how few ships we build. You look at some countries like South Korea, their laws set up for them to build, our laws set up for us not to build. But it's pretty scary. You know, during the Second World War, we were building a ship a day. Today, you can't build a ship in four years. It took us 10 years to build the Gerald Ford aircraft carrier, 10 years. And then they decided to be cute. They used, uh, instead of hydraulic elevators, they used magnetized elevators. So if I have a glass of water, I pour it on this massive, that's the end of that. They'll send, again, to MIT, they'll send somebody, send a couple of scientists. The uh, catapults were made electric instead of steam. And when I went to the ship, it was in big trouble because it was, listen to this, Louis, it was $10 billion over budget. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? And I wanted to go and see this ship that was costing so much money. And I landed with a helicopter on top of this massive, incredible ship in Newport News, being made in Newport News. And I said to the people, they all greeted me, and they said, sir, this is the admiral, and this is the general, and this is this or that. I said, I don't want to meet those people. I want to meet the catapult people, the people that have done the catapulting. They call them catapulters. And so they uh, said, really, sir, wouldn't you rather see the Admiral first? No, the ship is $10 billion over budget. I don't need the Admiral. I want to find out what the hell happened because the catapults weren't working. So for 50 years, we used steam more. It, and that beautiful scene, that steam goes off and that plane gets thrown the hell off the power. Beautiful. And it's cheap. So... They bring these five guys over, one's named Joe. I said, Joe, hi. Yes, sir, I'm the chief catapulter. It's what I've done my whole life, sir. If you told him he could live in a penthouse in Trump Tower, 
and have the life of Riley that I did have before I did this crap. Do you do understand? I had the greatest life of anybody, Wesley. They say, what the hell did you do this for? I got more indictments than Al Capone. If I flew my plane right over there, they'd indict me for flying over his property. Uh, it's unbelievable. But I said to Mario, so let me ask you, Mario, you have a big problem with the electric cattle. Yes, sir. I said, well, why? Because it doesn't work, sir. And when it breaks, you have to be a rocket scientist to fix it. It's so complicated. We'll never understand it, sir. <laughs> I said, well, which is better, steam or electric? Steam, sir. I said, why did they design electric? Because it can keep going like this all day long, but it takes us 59 seconds to reload a plane. And when we reload the plane, the steam builds up and it's all set, sir. It's perfect. It works so well. And we can fix it with a blowtorch if it, something happens. And if a wave hits it, it actually cools us down, sir. We love the waves hitting us. If a wave hits the electric, we're out of business, sir. We might, you know, we'll die with this thing. I said, it'll never work, will it? No, sir. They spent $900 million on extras, cost extras, to fix it. And it never really got fixed. Never really got fixed. And then Joe told me one other thing. He said, sir, check out the elevators. They're a disaster. I don't work on elevators, sir, but speak to my counterpart. They have these massive elevators bigger than this area that lift up like six planes at one time. You know, you're in an emergency. You can't do one, two. And they're magnetized. Magnets pull them up. Now, I don't know too much about that subject, but I'd rather have hydraulic. Hydraulic. Wouldn't you think so, Mario? You, you have hydraulic. I want hydraulic. You know, you can have a tractor, you get a D10, they even have a D12 now, Caterpillar, and that thing can be hit by lightning, it can be hit by a blowtorch, it can be hit by anything, it's going to work. So I said, why didn't they use the hydraulic system, sir? He goes, they didn't use it, sir, because they don't know what the hell they're doing, sir. And they were having a huge problem with the elevators, because uh, when they're uh, magnetized, is very delicate, and when they break, nobody knows how to fix it. What the hell is the world coming to? Nope. Imagine you're in a battle, Louis, and you need your planes up on the deck fast. And they say, well, the water's a little rough today. The elevators got hit by a couple of drops of water, and now they're out. That's where we are. So it's just one other thing. They built the aircraft carrier differently. They put the cabin, the tower, not in the middle. You know the way it's shaped this way, right? He would know exactly what I'm talking about. Steve, you would know too. It's shaped this way, right? And the hardest thing for a pilot to do, great pilots, the hardest thing to do is land a plane on an aircraft carrier. And some of the best pilots in the world can't do it because they're claustrophobic a little bit. You don't want to be a pilot, even if you're really good, if you're claustrophobic. Not if you're landing in the middle of the sea. And as big as that aircraft carrier is, when you're up there going at a thousand miles an hour, looking for your aircraft carrier, and then you spot a little, like an ant in the ocean. It's big when you're next to it, but it's not big when you're up there. And you gotta land that thing on a little tiny deck, as big as it looks, it's tiny. Those are the most talented people. <laughs> so what they did is they built the aircraft carrier, and they decided, to put the tower, you know, the tower where the admiral is and the captain and they're all, you know, they're talking to all the other ships that are surrounding it, make it say beautiful scene, like the Roosevelt and others, beautiful, beautiful ships. But I said, what the hell, why do you have this tower in the back? Well, sir, that's the way we decided. Nobody could tell me why. I said, but I knew a lot about the landings and the pilots and the talent, and you have actually some great pilots, they just can't do that. They just can't do it. They cannot land on an aircraft carrier for reasons. I mean, you know, they can't do it. They may be better than some of the pilots that can land, but they can't do it. So I said, when you move it to the back, doesn't that create a problem for the pilots? Because that's back there. You got to land it. That means you're landing like you got to miss that tower on top of everything else. You could have more deck space in the back, right? Yes, sir. That's right. 
I said, who was the architect of this ship? So I called the, the people, the admiral, I said, I'd like to meet with the architect. I said, could I ask you one question? Yes, now you understand, this is the largest ship in the world. This is like Kennedy Airport in New York. We wish we had runways that big, right? I said, uh, may I ask you one question? And I don't mean to be rude. Yes, sir. Have you ever designed a ship before? And he said, well, I worked on a couple. Now, this, these people are, this is crazy, Wesley. You could look at things that they do. And I said, I have one more question. Why do you have this room on the bottom, these very unusually shaped rooms? So that's where we store ammunition. I said, so you store all of your ammunition under the tower. How does the captain feel about that? Okay. All righty then. I'm out of here.